Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you again for another episode. Before we start on our episode, I I don't have to, but I, I'm, I will mention that yesterday, Wednesday, September 19th, was not only Talk Like a Pirate Day, but it was also Hermione Granger's birthday. What do these things have to do with each other? Absolutely nothing, except that they're both fun holidays, and I didn't realize that they were on the same day. I knew that September 19th was Talk Like a Pirate Day. I don't know why September 19th happens to be Talk Like a Pirate Day. There are a million and seven different weird holidays. I mean, if you look on apps that give you holidays for every day, every day of the year has anywhere between... Two and ten random holidays. And some of them are really random and some of them are kind of interesting. And it's, I don't know, it's just a lot of fun to look them up and see what X day of the year is. But I should have known that September 19th was Hermione's birthday. I just should have. What kind of a Harry Potter fan am I if I don't know Hermione's birthday? I mean, I know that September 1st is when we all get on the train and go to Hogwarts. In my defense, The books never do mention Hermione's birthday. You would think having a birthday 19 days into every school year would be mentioned, but it's not. So hmm. anyway, happy birthday to Hermione Granger, who turns out is not that much younger than I am because the books, you know, were even though they started in the 90s, they were set in the 80s, except that's never really specified until we find out later, blah, 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 blah. So This is not an episode about Harry Potter. This is not an episode about pirates. It's nothing to do with either of those things. If you saw the title, you know that this episode is about quilting. Well, yeah, sort of. Yeah, not even sort of. It is about quilting. It's about books and it's about quilting. So recently, I was reminded of a book that I actually own, but I haven't seen in a while. So I've got a collection of children's books and no children of my own. And I'm very far away from my nieces. So my children's books used to be in my old office where I use them all the time in my in my old life. And then when I quit that job and moved into other things, Those got boxed up and there hasn't been a place to put them. So they are in a box in the garage, which just makes me sad. I mean, my husband needs to build me a library. Why won't he build me a library? I don't know. I'll have to ask him. Um, But so I don't I don't always see them as often as I would like. They're very difficult to get to. Uh, You have to squeeze by a car and get into. Yeah. And then they're under another box of books and. It's just sadness. I need to make the effort and go find that box of books and put it somewhere where I can get to it more readily. At any rate, I was recently reminded of a book that I own, a children's book called The Quilt Maker's Gift. Have you heard of it? I had not until a friend of mine gave it to me several years ago. One of my best friends in the whole wide world. She was one of my roommates in grad school and she is just Well, she's one of my best friends in the whole wide world, and she's one of the most amazing people in the whole wide world. So, of course, she would give me amazing books. This one is called The Quilt Maker's Gift. It is by Jeff Brumbo and illustrated by Gail DeMarkin. It came out March 1st of 2011, so it's not a new book. It is a children's book, but it is not for young children. There's a lot of words on every page. The illustrations are beautiful. I love the illustrations. There's so much color. Um, It almost looks sometimes like one of those I spy books. (laughs) There's so much detail in a a picture. It's also a book about 
a quilt maker and quilts. And so there's all kinds of quilt patterns. She even, the, he uh, and she, the, the author and the illustrator, even show patterns and say what their names are. And so you learn about quilts. At the end of the book, it says, visit the quilt maker and the king online at www.quiltmakersgift.com, where you will find puzzles and games, um, all kinds of things. Now, I just realized as I said that, that I did not double check that that link still works. So maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but um, I'll check at the break for you, okay, and let you know. At any rate, this really isn't for younger children because there are a lot of words. I mean, if you have a really patient young child, um, that's fine, but it does tend to get a little lengthy. Let me go ahead and look and see what age group it is recommended for. If my computer will cooperate, it's being very, very slow. Um, oh, there's also a book called The Quilt Maker's Journey by Jeff Brumbo and Gail DeMarkin. I did not know that either, and now I do, and now I have to look into that. Aren't you glad when I just randomly give you information? Oh, so this says age range four to eight years. So I apologize. It is for younger children. It just seems a little wordy sometimes. Maybe maybe it's not so wordy. I, I would I would read them with groups of kids in in uh, I think I've mentioned before that I work with a preschool. So those those were younger, younger kids, four to eight. You know, if you have a, a more patient four-year-old, I think that would probably work. The grade level, it says, is preschool to third grade. It's uh, 56 pages. So there you go for some information. Now, you're probably saying t to yourself or to me, Sarah, what the heck is this book about? Obviously, it's about a quilt maker, but what's going on? So the description on Amazon is that is this. When a generous quilt maker finally agrees to make a quilt for a greedy king, but only under certain conditions, she causes him to undergo a change of heart. So there's a famous quilt maker in this in this king's kingdom, and the king wants her to make a quilt for him, but she she doesn't want to agree for a long time. She holds out for a long time. And I actually found this really interesting website, um, teachingchildrenphilosophy.org, and it talks about the quilt maker's gift, and it gives us a little bit more of a description of this book. Teaching philosophy, teaching children philosophy. We, we teach children philosophy all the time, right? We just maybe don't think that we're teaching them philosophy, but we are. And so I think it's, I, I find it fascinating that there is a website about teaching children philosophy. If you want to do that on a more, in a more deliberate manner. Um, so this article is by Cassie L. Owens and Marina Lawson, and they say that The Quilt Maker's Gift by Jeff Brumbo and Gail DeMarkin is a story of generosity. It raises the philosophical question of what it is to be generous, whether that involves the giving of material wealth alone or simply of giving another being happiness, comfort, or peace. It also raises the question of whether or not material wealth can provide happiness. In doing so, the question, what is happiness, is raised. Is happiness simply an inner state as believed by traditionalists, or is it an outer behavior as believed by the behaviorists? See, that's definitely philosophy, right? Yeah. Um, the story raises an interesting question regarding whether or not it's possible to, to teach certain moral lessons to others. The quilt maker believes that the king will be happiest when he has given everything away and is poor, but it takes the king a while to learn this lesson, and even when he has done what she has asked, he does not consider himself to be a poor man. So don't want to give everything away. I mean, that gives you a really good overview of the book. As I said, the book is the the illustrations are beautiful i love the illustrations i love the story and um it is a book of the year winner uh, according to the emblem on the book on the book cover so at any rate it's been a while since i've read this book but i am going to go dig it out because it's wonderful and the illustrations are so full of color they they look like watercolors um and they're just, they're so beautiful and detailed. And like I said, they're so detailed. Sometimes they feel almost like an I Spy book where there's just so many things happening in them. And they, they include 
actual quilt patterns, which I think is very cool. I know a little bit about quilting and not a lot. I know that I am terrible at hand quilting, that the front looks beautiful, but if you turn it over, it looks like a drunken caterpillar walked through. <laughs> terrible at hand quilting, but my grandmother was a quilter and my mother not quite as prolific, but also a quilter. And they were both much better at hand quilting than I, although I haven't practiced in a very long time. So maybe I should. At any rate, that is our first segment on quilted books. When we come back, we'll be looking at some more books that deal with quilting. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, where the topic is books about quilts. And before the break, I was talking about The Quilt Maker's Gift, a children's book. And as I was looking uh, at that book, I was impressed and surprised to discover that there is a second book, The Quilt Maker's Journey. So I looked at that during the break, and that is written again by Jeff Brumbo and illustrated by Gail DeMarkin. So you get the same sort of illustrations, the same beautiful illustrations. And it is actually a prequel. It came out in 2010 and it's a prequel to The Quilt Maker's Gift. So I will be checking that out as soon as possible because I love the first one. So of course I want to read the prequel. I did also check out, as I said I would, to see if that link still works. And when I typed in quiltmakersgift.com, it took me to the Scholastic homepage. So quiltmakersgift.com does not seem to be a working website any longer. So ignore what I said earlier about there being puzzles and games and such. Sorry, gave you false information. Correcting it now, though. So after I remembered this book that I own that I haven't read in a while, I started thinking, what other books are there out about quilting? Because I'm sure there are. The first thing that came to mind was How to Make an American Quilt. Have you read this one? It, it's, um, it's an older book. Um, maybe you knew it was a book. Maybe you've read it. Maybe you knew it was a movie in the 90s. Maybe you've seen the movie but didn't realize it was a book. Um, I can't remember now if I saw the movie first and then read the book or if I read the book and then saw the movie. The movie... Um, stars, among other people, Winona Ryder and Maya Angelou, which is pretty cool if you write a book and then Maya Angelou starts, stars in it. Not a bad way to go, I would say. So the book is by Whitney Otto, and it came out in 1994. Oh, on my birthday in 1994. Very cool. And let me go ahead and give you a description of the book in case you haven't read it or it's been a long time since you've read it. An extraordinary and moving novel, How to Make an American Quilt, is an exploration of women yesterday, of yesterday and today who join together in a uniquely female experience. As they gather year after year, their stories, their wisdom, their lives form the pattern from which all of us draw warmth and comfort for ourselves. And uh, it also says that in addition to Winona Ryder and Maya Angelou, Anne Bancroft and Ellen Burstyn were also in this movie. The movie came out in 1999. I don't think I've seen it since then, so it's been a very long time. I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think I enjoyed it. I cannot remember how it compared to the book. I don't remember feeling like sheer hatred toward it because it veered so far off the book, but I don't know. I could be wrong. If you have been listening to this podcast for a while, then you're not going to be surprised by what I say next about the book. Um, things that I liked about the book are that it features female relationships, multi-generational female relationships. There are, you know, several layers going on with characters and they're, they're tied together by a quilting group, which is something that else that I love in books, not, not 
necessarily quilting, but whether it's quilting or a book group or um, knitting circle or whatever it is, I always like when there's that commonality, something that brings the, the crew together and then you get all the different personalities playing off of each other and you get their histories. And because this is multi-generational, then you get insights from different eras um, or different decades, different generations, and just how that all plays together. And then of course, um, the character who's played by Winona Ryder in the movie is is the younger generation and she is learning from these women and experiencing things. She's trying to figure some things out in her own life. And so, of course, as she is spending time with this quilting group, she's learning all kinds of things because it's a quilting group. So, of course, there's 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 lessons to be learned about quilting, but also lessons to be learned from quilting, right? There's always those kinds of things that are tied into a novel like this, which is something that, uh, again, I personally appreciate. So actually, let me go ahead and give you a sl somewhat more thorough description than the one I gave you earlier, and it ties into what I was just saying. So um, how to make an American quilt captures the rites of passage in women's lives. The art of quilting, be quilt making becomes a metaphor for the realities of being a woman in America as the unforgettable stories of seven members of a contemporary California quilting group unfold. And as we come to understand the beauty and complexity of the quilting process to see its evolution in America. American history, we come to intimately know the history of these women as well. That is so much better said than what I did. Also, this is saying uh, there, that I must have been looking at a specific edition that came out in 1994 because this is saying it was first published in 1990. So, yeah. So we get the analogy of quilting as life or the quilt as life. You know how you, you think different, different materials, different experiences are patched together. You can see a lot of where this would be go. Um, I like, I like books like this. I like, um, like I said, books that have that central activity or theme, and then they bring a group of people together. The author brings a group of people together around that central theme. The central theme then not only serves as an opportunity for the people in the book to get together and tell their stories and interact with each other, but also frequently serves as a metaphor for other things that are going on in their lives. And I just like the, those multi, multi layers, multi generations. Um, I, I appreciate books that have again, strong female relationships in them, etc. So it was nice to be reminded of this as well. I'm just being reminded of quilt related books this week that I need to go back and revisit. Um, again, it's been quite some time since I saw the movie. I cannot tell you, I can't tell you if I liked it or not. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Um, so if you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. If you have read it and also watched the movie, I would love to hear what you thought uh, as a comparison. If you liked one better than the other, maybe you liked the book better than the movie. Maybe you liked the movie better than the book. Um, and tell me why why it is that you liked one better than the other or how the movie did at adapting to the book. Quilting. Yeah, so I mentioned that my grandmother and my mother both quilt and it's just making me think about some of the quilts that are in my lot in our lives we've got some from my my great grandmother quilted as well i didn't i didn't know her she died before i was born but we have some very old quilts in our family that were made by my great grandmother i don't think we have anything made before her but that's that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty old quilt my grandmother would have been in her I think she would have been in her hundreds now. So her mother would have been, you know, a generation older than that. My grandmother was the youngest of four. So her mother, I don't remember how old her mother was when she had my grandmother, but quilts made by my great grandmother are no spring chickens. But the most special quilts that we have currently in my family, at least for me, um, my grandfather, after he retired, began doing cruel embroidery, and he 
did so many amazing things. My grandmother's house was pretty much the only thing on the walls were his artwork that he did with cruel embroidery. But he also did some quilts where he would do the embroidery for each square and then my grandmother would quilt them. On the guest room at my mom's house is one of the quilts that he made that has all 50 states, has an outline of a, of a state, the name of a state when it became a uh, when it first became a state um, it has for the first the original 13 colonies what order they came in to you know they came into the union in and then it's got uh, the state bird an outline a, a picture of the state bird and the state flower I believe and then in the middle of the quilt it's got uh, a US map so it's so cool so my grandfather did this uh, an incredible amount of work and then my grandmother quilted it and it is such a special memento in our lives and he did another one that my aunt has and off the top of my head I can't remember exactly what's on that one I just remember the one that's in the guest room because I often sleep under it when I go home which is awesome so you can see why quilts have a special place in my heart especially those and then why quilting books might have a special place in my heart just hanging out my grandmother used to be part of the quilting group at her church and so she would often be sewing together quilt squares when I was visiting and then my mother has done some quilts and yeah it's just it's it's got a lot of good memories and nostalgia for me so we're going to take our second break of the podcast, and when we come back, we'll be finishing up this episode about quilted books. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, where I am talking about quilting and books today. And as I was thinking about this topic, the first, obviously, my, my the, child, the children's book, The Quilt Maker's Gift, was what launched me onto this topic. And then the first book that came to mind after that was How to Make an American Quilt. But I was trying to think, have I read any other books that have the feature quilting or quilting circles? And I couldn't think of any. So, of course, I went to the internet to see if it could help. Um, jog my memory and the lists that came up I didn't see anything that I had read but one name kept popping up over and over and that is Jennifer um Chiaverini I apologize if I did not pronounce that correctly C-H-I-A-V-E-R-I-N-I -I -I. and she has a series called the Elm Creek Quilts series. Looks like it started in about 1999 and went through 2012. There are 20 books in the series and there's also an Elm Creek Quilts companion. Uh, it's new fiction, traditions, quilts, and favorite moments from the beloved series. So I have not read this series, but now that I'm seeing it, I am intrigued. I'm wondering if any of you have read it and what you thought. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so the first book in the series is called The Quilter's Apprentice, and um, I'll give you the description of that just in case you're interested. When Sarah McClure and her husband Matt move to Waterford, Pennsylvania, she hopes to make a fresh start in the small college town. Unable to find a job both practical and fulfilling, she takes a temporary position at Elm Creek Manor, helping its reclusive owner, Sylvia Compson, prepare her family estate for sale after the death of her estranged sister. Sylvia is also a master quilter and, as part of Sarah's compensation, offers to share the secrets of her creative gifts with the younger woman. 
During their lessons, the intricate, varied threads of Sylvia's life begin to emerge. It is the story of a young wife living through the hardships and agonies of the World War II home front, of a family torn apart by jealousy and betrayal, of misunderstanding, loss, and a tragedy that can never be undone. As the bond between them deepens, Sarah resolves to help Sylvia free herself from remembered sorrows and restore her life and her home to its former glory. In the process, she confronts painful truths about her own family, even as she creates new dreams for the future. Just as the darker sections of a quilt can enhance the brighter ones, the mistakes of the past can strengthen understanding and lead the way to new beginnings. A powerful debut novel by a gifted storyteller, The Quilter's Apprentice, tells a timeless tale of family, friendship, and forgiveness as two women weave the disparate pieces of their lives into a bountiful and harmonious whole. That was a really detailed description, which I love. Now, if you listened to the last segment, which I assume you did, since you're here with me in this third segment, you're going to know that this appeals to everything that I talked about in the last segment. <laughs> Female relationships, um, multi-generational, books that span the past and the present and tell intertwining stories that have, you know, that, that, reveal something from the past that has an effect on the future or on the present and and look world war ii you know i've been in i've been in a in a fascination uh with reading novels set during world war ii so this has a part of that so that is the first book in this elm creek quilters series it's uh and i looked on jennifer chiaferini's website just to see a little bit more about her and she also writes historical fiction so mrs lincoln's dressmaker is one of her books um the spy mistress is another so mrs grant and madame jewel so if you are a fan of historical fiction she might be someone to check out again if you have read any of those elm creek quilt series i would love to hear about it um Tell me if you liked it. Tell me, how, you know, I don't know if each book is a standalone that, and they just happen to all take place in Elm Creek or, um, yeah, how that works. So I am, this is less of a book review and more of a, this sounds really interesting and I would like to read it because it has to do with all the things that I have been talking about. And I like quilting, even though I am terrible at it. So <laughs> please Please tell me if you have read these books and what you thought. And it turns out that I actually answered part of my earlier questions about the series, and it looks like they continue with some of the same characters. The second book in the series is Around Robin, and it uh, talks about the Elm Creek quilters, um, and then it mentions Sarah McClure, who came to Waterford, Pennsylvania with her husband Matt a few years ago, and talks about Sylvia Compson, so she's also in there. So it looks like that at least the first few have the same um, the same characters and maybe since it looks like there's a, a quilting group then maybe we start getting more of the other characters backstories and those types of things yeah and then I looked also at the the companion book and that has um, an introduction of the series it also has a synopsis of those novels and the there's there's apparently six Elm Creek quilts pattern books, which is really cool. Also, there's a timeline, which would probably be helpful if you um, have if well, it's always helpful when you're reading through books. So, um, residents and visitors, the characters who inhabit the world of Elm Creek. There's a family tree. There's important places in the series or the stories. Um, gives you it even gives you a floor plan of the of Elm Creek, Elm Creek Manor. So yeah, definitely one of those. Um, companion books and it looks like maybe Sarah and Sylvia appear throughout the series at least so oh my gosh I just realized obviously duh my name is Sarah I know that but my grandmother's name Sylvia <laughs> hmm. I, I don't know if I believe in the universe t giving me signs but maybe the universe is telling me hey you should read this book Sarah Sylvia quilting good stuff so that is, again, not exactly a book review because I haven't read them, but I am now intrigued. And maybe you are too. Maybe you could care less about quilting and you'd rather read a book that has something to do with something else. That's cool. Um, in fact, I would love to hear from you on that front as well. What are the books 
you know, I mentioned earlier, sometimes it's a book club, sometimes it's a knitting group, sometimes it's a Bible study group. There's all kinds of groups. Are there series that have that element in it that you love? I would love to hear from you about those series, what you liked, who the author is, of course, and all of that good stuff. Um, I would love to hear from you. So I think we're going to wrap it up for this quilting edition of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I hope that you will join me again on Tuesday. Have an author interview, this time with uh, mystery author Roger Johns. We'll be talking about the second book in his Wallace Hartman mystery series, and that book is called River of Secrets. So I am looking forward to having Roger Roger on the podcast, and I hope that you will join me for that interview. I hope you have a great weekend. Go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.